Hello, welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim DeRamo, and I am really excited to be sharing with you something really powerful that all of us can um, activate within ourselves. All of us can sort of utilize this understanding and something that's been really prominent in my life lately because of something um, my husband has been engaging with and teaching me more and more about. And that is Vipassana. You may or may not have heard of Vipassana, but today you're gonna get a little mini crash course about what it is, how can we all take advantage and cultivate this power for healing. So welcome, I would love to hear where you're tuning in from. I know with people all over the world and I'm so, so excited and grateful for our connected community. I created Mind Body TV as a way to share resources for assisting the body in healing itself. There is so much power we have access to and we can sort of shut that down or we can open that back up. And the invitation really is no matter how challenging things are, no matter how hopeless something seems, no matter how stuck you may feel, you can go back to that inner connection and allow it to open. This is where life force comes in for healing the body. This is where solutions come in for unwinding crazy conundrums happening in our lives that seem unmanageable. We have to go back to connection with the source from which we are created and we can do that anytime. So I'm really excited to share this um, with you today because the darkness is ready to be seen. We have each in our bodies carried information and, and, and sort of like misinformation, right? Lies that we're living by thinking they're true. Like I'm not good enough or I have this disease and therefore it means I'll never be well or I'll always have to take medications or uh, oh, this happened to me, I had a trauma and therefore I'll never be the same. And so when we carry these lies, whether it's belief systems or it's in our own uh, memories and experiences and just conclusions we made, or there's things in our DNA that get passed on generation to generation. We've seen in really incredible science that when they studied generations down of these mice, they had the same characteristics and behaviors even though they had never been exposed to that particular trauma. So the trauma response gets encoded. So maybe you've never actually experienced um, living in poverty, but you still always really fear money and you're really sort of like tight. Or maybe you've never um, had a sexual trauma, but you're really, really not fluid and healthy with your own sexuality. Or maybe you have never had, um, you know, a certain kind of uh, experience. You know, there's, there's all kinds of things we carry and you feel like, why am I always worried about this? Why am I always holding this? It's in our energy. It's in the body. It holds it um, down to the level of our DNA. And so we can actually allow a major change and a shift in that encoding, in our cellular, in our DNA, in our energy field. And this has been shown to generate changes in the brain. Your brain is neuroplastic. You can create new pathways to create changes in your physiology, your chemistry, your hormones, your cortisol level stress hormones, inflammatory cascade, and those kinds of chemicals, um, sometimes very, very quickly. But the point is, all this darkness that we've been carrying around, the fear, the idea we're separate, the idea we're limited, um, the idea that our power is outside of ourselves and it's conditioned on needing all these things, getting it right, getting the degree, being smart enough, being good enough, proving. It uses a lot of our energy. And so then we're living according to these programs, these lies, and then there's just not enough energy for like basic housekeeping, like healthy gut microbiome, or basic housekeeping, like healthy, potent thyroid function, 
or basic housekeeping like the adrenals being repleted and continuing to energize the body. All kinds, there's like a million things that get depleted because the body can't do that basic self-regeneration as it was designed. One of the things uh, referent to Vipassana, which I, I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna talk about is um, someone I heard talk about it said, don't think of all the things that come up as triggers, as uh, challenges, as like an evil thing or a bad thing or, oh, I got to get this out of my system, right? Don't look at the darkness like this bad thing I've got to get beyond because what you resist persists. But instead, look at it as, as an obstacle that is there for my growth. It's something for me to integrate. And if I receive it, I actually grow from that and I'll actually grow beyond that. And it will grow me into a different being, right? A being of more compassion, a being of greater strength, a being of greater integrity, because we really don't see how we're out of integrity until like, you know, something happens. And so um, we have the capacity to transmute those energies of the darkness, of the lie, and let it release from our body. And so my husband recently did this Vipassana retreat. He was recommended by a mentor he was working with who's done this every year. And what the retreat is, is uh, a 10 day silent meditation. Basically you're at a Vipassana center and you're sitting for 12 hours a day in stillness, in silence, in meditation, which is like, what? And he, uh, he started sort of prepping for this. So he was meditating an hour a day, maybe for a couple months, and then it was two hours a day for maybe like a month and a half before he went. And he started uh, having major, major changes in his life, insight. Um, the ability to listen and be present rather than be defensive or deflect or uh, protecting, you know, and not, not able to really hear things. Uh, a lot more clarity on what he's here to do in his life. A lot more um, presence with the kids and with myself, so his family. Um, and then when he went to the retreat, it was a massive game changer. And I know for everyone in this community, you could probably imagine like, whoa, this is a different person. This is such a major change. Um, and for some people, I realized, I'd never considered this before, that that doesn't even compute. Because someone said to me, what do you mean different person? What do you mean? How is he a different person? How can that be? How can he be a different person? Um, and I thought, what is that about? Like, it seems pretty uh, comprehensible <laughs> that when you change within and you get so much more able to sit and really connect with yourself, it's going to change like everything in your life. And so the, the piece with Vipassana that's so powerful is you have nowhere to go. You don't have your phone. You don't have a book. You don't have a journal. You don't have other people. And so there's no distraction from what arises. And so um, the main point I wanted to share in this episode is that the darkness dissolves in the light of your presence. And so the first three days of the Vipassana, and as he shared this with me, I just was really in awe because the work I've done my whole life was exactly the same premise. And as I've shared in the instant elevation, it's A, B, C. But A, which is cultivating your attention, your presence, is like 99% of the whole game. You know, and then B is breathing, you're shifting your physiology to, to let more in. And then C is your conscious choice. Most spiritual people or people wanting to manifest or wanting self-healing are doing C. I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I'm gonna take these supplements, I'm gonna heal myself. That's where I was way back when I was dealing with a severe autoimmune disease. I had severe, severe chronic pain. I couldn't run anymore. Chronic fatigue, like a million different diagnoses, kind of like no diagnoses, because they're like, we don't really know what's going on. And I was trying to heal myself, but I wasn't in the A, right? In the right awareness, in the presence. I hadn't cultivated my power that it could do that. So forget C, forget your choice, forget your intention really right now. In the Vipassana, the first three days, you're using what's called Anapana. And you're focusing on this area, breathing in and out through the nose, focusing on the nose. So it's like a little triangle, the tip of the nose 
and then the base of the nose, there's your little triangle. And for three whole days, I think it's 12 hours a day, you're breathing in, you're breathing out. It's guided, not just like left on your own, but you're breathing in, you're breathing out. And he shared how much potency of focus and presence he was able to cultivate in those three days. You're doing nothing else. That's how important this is, that they're showing you the, the attention, getting your presence. You're not thinking about the problems or the people or the, you know, whatever. You're here. You're breathing in. You're breathing out. You're bringing sensation, feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath go out. And that's it. It allowed him to cultivate so much presence here now. Your body can only live in the now. It can't live in the future. It can't live in the past. It can't live outside you and what other people think. It can only be in what's actually here now. And now you're getting your attention, right? So your body's here now. Where are you? Are you off floating in la la land? Because you can do that in the mind. But when you get here, the mind and the body connect, there's power. So you can, <laughs> you can go to one of these retreats, but it's not for everybody. And, and the downloads of what I was shown to cultivate power in my body for literally healing an entire autoimmune disease. And, and now later in my life, like cultivating love, cultivating solutions when there seems to be none, uh, cultivating creativity and clarity. What am I doing? What am I creating? Um, has been all because of that capacity to harness, to cultivate my power and get here now. I didn't do it using the Anapana, although now we, we practice this together. Um, I did it by breathing into my body and bringing the presence in my body. It's the same thing, it's a different way of, of doing a similar thing. But until we get here now, we don't have power. You could do all the, you know, diets in the world and supplements and restore your gut microbiome or whatever you're gonna do to help heal a disease or help resolve challenges in your life. But if you have no personal power, you're just gonna keep running that hamster wheel. And so I thought this was really powerful. Um, he's been back for like two weeks now and it's like every day I'm learning more because we could probably sit down for like a year and just talk about this stuff, but we've got regular life happening. So it's like little nuggets of me um, learning from him and him sharing what happened. But this was the thing he talked about the most. And so I kept asking him, well, what was the Vipassana part? That's after day four, you do more Vipassana, which is where you bring the presence into the body for transmutation, for healing, like people have the most unthinkable awakening experiences, like really, really out there. Like, holy cow, how did that happen? And uh, and and it was certainly true for him because there's so many miracles that happen in major insights and changes. Um, and every time I would ask him about the Vipassana part, he'd go back to the Anapana part, right? The first three days, cultivating the presence. And, and it was funny how I'm like, is he trying not to tell me about this? But it wasn't that, it's, this is so integral. This first part of cultivating the presence is so integral to everything else you're doing through the rest of the retreat in the Vipassana that it's like, you don't even need to talk about that until you first get this. And, and that really is what like, ding, 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 lit off all the light bulbs for me is the same awareness I've had with what I call the instant elevation, the, the three-step process for self-healing and self-clearing and awakening. It's the same thing. That A step, awareness, you could just do it all, all day, all the time while you're looking at this video. Breathe into your body, feel your body, sense your body. While you're taking your kids to school, while you're doing your work, while you're making your food, while you're wiping your butt, like, is there presence in your body? Because the mind can be somewhere else. And then it's like, why is nothing working? It's because the power, the attention, the presence hasn't been, it's like put the light in the lighthouse, <laughs> hasn't been in the body. So you gotta get your presence, your attention. Um, and so you can practice this right now. If you just, you know, 
Soften your shoulders. Have a few deep breaths. And feel what's happening in your body here now. You can do it with the Anapana, which is focusing on this little triangle here right at the base of the nose. And 10 times, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And all you're doing is allowing that sensation because the body is a portal and it will bring you here now. The things though can be distractions that bring you away from that. So stay here for 10 breaths and see what arises. Does it feel like, oh, I don't have time for this. I'll get to this part later. <laughs> There's so many ways we wanna escape actually cultivating presence and power. So what is it that comes up? Feel your body, breathe in, breathe out. What do you notice? Are there thoughts that are so disturbing you just have to go back and distract yourself? Can you stay here anyway and just let those thoughts be here? And so one of the major pieces in the Vipassana um, that I asked him about is, um, you know, what are you doing to transmute the energy? You know, because you bring all the presence to your body, you do a scan, you feel, you bring all that presence you cultivated and you feel your face, you feel your head and neck, you feel your chest and shoulders, you feel your, you know, your, uh, your chest, your abdomen. You bring a scan, you bring presence throughout the body and you cultivate such a deep awareness of what's actually going on in here. Now, most of us have been trained throughout our lives there's nothing going on here. That's not important. Get productive. Do the thing. Focus on the outer, right? Which actually totally diminishes your power. And then your body's left with like not having that presence, <laughs> which is medicine. And so he shared today, I said, well, what do you do to like welcome the sensations or how do you transmute the energy? He said, no, you've cultivated so much presence. All you're doing is observing. All you're doing is observing. And that's because the observation, right? It's the observer effect. Your observation of something, your presencing it, your awareness of it has the impact. Um, if you've not studied quantum physics, this is pretty fascinating. It has been so fascinating for me um, that they find with the observer effect, just the act of looking at something, paying attention to it. You know, you've got your own intentions, you've got your own expectations, you've got your own perspectives. It actually has an impact on that physical material. It would have an impact on the outcome of the experiment, it would have an impact on the photons and the electrons that make up the physical stuff. It's pretty amazing. And it wasn't a subtle effect, it was a very, very, powerful, profound effect on that physical material. Well, that's your body. You can bring your presence, your witnessing, your observation to the body, to whatever is here and just observe. And that will have the healing effect. Now, if you've got attachment, I've got to, I've got to heal this. I've got to heal this. It sort of gets in the way. It's not just observing, that's attachment. If you've got fear, oh, oh no, I'm seeing this, I'm noticing that. I wonder if it's cancer. Oh my God, it's never gonna go away. Which is what I had been doing that made the disease worse and worse and worse and worse. It's like it got more complex. It's not the same thing. And that's why they had them spend three whole days with just clearing the mind, just presence. Anapana, just presence. You're breathing in, you're breathing out. I am not anywhere near close to being a Vipassana expert. I have studied it very minimally. I have not attended a Vipassana retreat. I'm sharing this because my husband recently did study Vipassana and did um, participate in a 10-day retreat. He said it was one of the most profound and intense experiences of his entire life. And he's a physician. He, he's a very intense person. He's been through a lot, a lot of intense experiences. So that was like really saying a lot. 
Um, and I've just from, you know, sleeping next to this person and, and gleaning from him what this experience was like, it's activated so much in me. And as I mentioned, having had my own awareness and clarity and downloads, we all can have that connection with source and receive insight and guidance. Um, and the instant elevation was sort of how I then broke it up. Well, what is this that I'm doing that was healing my body? What is this I'm doing that's cultivating power and I'm seeing the outcomes in my life change as a result? And I broke that into the instant elevation process, the three-step process. Um, there's a whole course I created for that called the Instant Elevation Program. Um, but it was exactly the same thing that he was sharing, that, that cultivating the presence. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to breathe in through my nose. I'm going to breathe out through my nose. All right, check the box. What's the next thing? Right? That's just another avoidance strategy. We don't really want to do the work <laughs> when we do that. And myself included, where I've just kind of wanted to skip on to like, where's the real thing? No, 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 you are the real thing. Your presence is the power. And when you cultivate that level of presence and equanimity, right? Just this is here and I'm willing to let this be here. I feel heavy and I'm willing to feel heavy. I feel so triggered and angry and I'm willing to feel as triggered as I feel and as angry as I feel, right? That's equanimity. I breathe in, I breathe out. There's a whole universe going on in here. And you're gonna get hijacked by it or are you gonna stay? I breathe in, I breathe out, yes to this. Welcoming what's here. That's when we cultivate. And, and it doesn't have to take 10 days, but um, the level of power is so profound that when we then bring that to what we're sensing in the body, it's clarifying. Just observing it clears it. It brings light. You are the light. Your presence is the light. Your observation of what you're noticing is the light. And so, so my invitation for you is to begin to acknowledge just how powerful you are when you cultivate your power, right? When you let your body be a space for that much power, you don't need to run away from it. And the other thing is the darkness is ready to be seen. And so for me, um, what's been coming up is all kinds of fear, all kinds of oh, feeling threatened, all kinds of urgency. I got to get this in place. I got to do that. And then just witness that. All right, I will invite this. I don't need to make a story up about it. Oh, this is this bad thing I've got to extricate. What if I welcome everything? about what's been the darkness, what's been heavy, what's been hateful, because it's actually all the aspects of me I've rejected, the aspects of me I have feared. And like, there might be a lot. So forgiveness is, is really, really, really powerful. Um, anything you're judging in someone else or judging in the world is actually something, you know, the whole universe is within you. Can you make space to welcome even this? Because that is really when you activate that infinite power that is the divine power that we can each access. And that's where we're moving. That is the new human that we begin to, yes, we are physical individual beings, but we are a spiritual being have a te having a temporary physical experience, right? You're not just a physical being having intermittent temporary spiritual experiences. You're a spiritual being having an intermittent temporary physical experience. And the more you remember that, the easier it will be to welcome what's here, to welcome what you notice so that you can bring more of you to the now. So, uh, yes, I, 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 Nietzsche is another concept he shared with me, which is impermanence. You're bringing your observation to what's here. There may be pain, there may be fear, there may be shame, there may be, oh, I just feel so powerless, it's not okay. It could, it, there could be a lot, and it's all impermanent. And when you remember that, you find more courage to bring that presence and that light of your observation. So I look forward to hearing from you about what this brings up for you 
um, any questions that come up as you're listening to this about Vipassana, about Anapana, about blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and it's not even necessarily for everybody to study that method, but it's pointing us toward a really powerful truth about who we are. Um, so I would love to hear your questions. We will be taking um, some of the questions from these episodes and doing clips and answering them with videos and and sharing that because I know there's a lot of good questions that come up. Um, I will say, because I can already hear so many people will say, but I am doing that. I am bringing presence. I am welcoming my experience. And that was exactly where I was at. Why isn't my body healing? Why isn't my body healing? And that's where I realized, oh, it's all conditional. I'm totally holding attachment. I'll bring presence and I'll welcome what's here so that it goes away and clears. And why isn't that happening? So much attachment. And so when I finally let my practice be about I'm going to show up in presence for the purpose of showing up and connecting, right, mind and body here now as an end in and of itself. That is really what activated so much more power for me. And, and I'm a work in progress, always, always, always expanding into more, always seeing more fears arise, more fears release, and learning to welcome the process. That's really all we can do. So I am so grateful that you are here. Uh, if you joined late, share where you're tuning in from, share any insights that came up. Have you heard about Vipassana before? Are you interested in participating in a retreat? I have been, um, I've actually applied, so I guess not just thinking about participating in a retreat, but uh, we're, we're percolating with that because um, it was so powerful for my husband that I thought, okay, this would be a wise choice. And then for like a whole 24 hours, I was scared to death because I realized, wow, there's a lot of stuff ready to be met that maybe I'm distracting from, just being in the regular world. And I was so, so, so scared um, for about a day. And then that sort of neutralized and I felt like a lot better about this. So I'm, I'm open, I'm willing, and we are, we're looking into that for, for myself. Um, so I will be here every week live. We broadcast on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Mountain Time in the Mind Body community in Facebook and on my YouTube channel, Dr. Kim DeRamo. On my website, drkimd.com, I have several pieces uh, where you can begin the journey on your own. There are online programs that guide you through this work of cultivating presence, shifting your physiology, shifting your brain, and entering consciousness so you can choose and live consciously. Uh, the Instant Elevation is sort of the foundational program that I've created for that. It's at drkimd.com forward slash IEP. And my book, The Mind Body Toolkit, is an awesome, awesome resource for understanding how are your mind and body are connected? How does this work? What's happening physiologically? How do I make changes? How does that impact my life? And there are 10 tools you can use anytime, anywhere to ignite that power and that intention in your life right now. That is at drkimd.com forward slash book. And make sure you're subscribed in YouTube. If you're watching this video now, give us a thumbs up, like the video, share this with others. The more conscious content people feel and receive, the more it will open the consciousness within you, within them, within all of us. And then we begin living in a whole new way. I'm so excited to be a part of that. I love you. I'm so grateful that we could connect. Thank you for listening here and I'll see you next